we're going to talk about quotient and product rules today. And um, these are, like I said, not on the quiz, but they will be on the test. Uh, so product and quotient rules. All right, so some of you might be familiar with some of these terms. We're on page 14 in the note packet. So our product rule is here. Remember, this is a command, and we are taking the derivative of the product. So it is the derivative of f times g plus the derivative of g times f. And this right here, sometimes you'll hear fig, figgy. Okay, it's just a way to remember it, fig, figgy. Okay, and please do not make this mistake over here. Do not make this mistake. Here, it is not, this is an error, f prime times g. This is bad. Bad, bad, bad. Okay? All right, quotient rule, which we are going to practice when you are taking the derivative of basically a division problem. Okay, this is a quotient. So this is one that oftentimes people forget. I always forget the g squared in the bottom. Let's try to make sure we do not. So again, it's f prime times g minus f g prime divided by g squared. Here the biggest thing is, well, that and one is a plus and one is a minus. Okay? This is also a bad, bad error here. Let's try not to make that mistake as well. Okay? All right, so again, these need to be committed to memory. Um, they are on your uh, concept cards, but we're going to uh, demonstrate here. Um, so one derivative that is going to come up a lot is the derivative of the square root of x. So this is definitely worth memorizing, okay? And the derivative of the square root of x is 1 over 2 square root of x. It shows up a lot. Worst case scenario, though, if you forget and you know your rules, um, your power rule is the one that you're going to use most often. You can definitely use that. Okay, so here we have um, in example one, we are looking at the derivative of a product. And then in example, the second example, we're going to take a look at uh, the quotient. So um, we're going to set it up like this, identify what we want as f and what we want as g. So we're going to set up a little table like this. Okay, so typically your first is going to be your f. So I'm going to say, all right, I want f to be equal to x cubed minus 2x plus 1. And my g is x to the fourth plus x. So now underneath, we're going to take the derivative. So what's the derivative of f? That's right, 3x squared minus 2. And what about g? What's the derivative? 4x cubed plus 1. Plus one. Okay. So based on the derivative of fig figgy, f prime g plus fg prime, we have everything that we need here. So we would say that the derivative, um, let's just call this f prime of x, meaning this whole thing right here, is equal to, it's f prime times g, so this would be 3x squared minus 2 times x to the fourth plus x, so that's f prime g plus f g prime, which in this case would be x cubed minus 2x plus 1 times 4x cubed plus 1. Okay, this right here is your derivative. That's a lot, right? So um, oftentimes when you're taking the derivative of a function, whether it's a product, a quotient, just any given f of x, what are we using that for? Typically, what have you been asked so far that you've needed the derivative for? What have you had to do? What was your task? Find to find the slope. Write an equation of a line that is tangent to some given function, right? So if I needed to use this to find the slope at a given x value, do I really need to multiply these two out, meaning complicate my life even more? Foiling this is not that big of a deal, but here I would have to either use a distributive property or use the box method, combine like term. It, get, it gets messy, right? So it is okay for you to leave your answer like this. If you really want to know what it looks like all simplified, the answer is posted on Blackboard. Okay? Questions on what we did here? Are you sure? Okay. Let's take a look here. So here we have a quotient, meaning a division problem, right? 
We're going to do the same thing. This would be F, this would be G. So we're going to create our little table here and say, all right, I want F to be equal to X squared plus 1 and G is equal to X squared minus 1. So we're going to find the derivative of each one. Okay. What's the derivative of F? 2X. What's the derivative of G? 2X. Uh, 2X. Okay. So now we're going to use the quotient rule and we're going to say that f prime of x is equal to, it's f prime times g, so this is 2x times x squared minus 1, minus f g prime. So I'm going to put the g prime first, 2x times x squared plus 1. Remember, commutative property for multiplication, doesn't matter. And this is all over g squared, which is x squared minus 1 squared. Okay, before I continue, does everyone see where I got everything from? I had all my pieces, I just put them in. So in this case, we can actually simplify this. It's not as difficult. This would be, um, what, 2x cubed minus 2x minus 2x cubed um, minus 2x. And this is all over x squared minus 1 squared. Is it plus squared? Nope. Minus, minus. What happens in the top? Yep, my 2x cubes are opposites. Are these zero? No, be careful. So we end up with what? Negative 4x over x squared minus 1 squared. So again, realistically, if you're being asked to evaluate the slope at a given value, uh, you didn't necessarily have to simplify. This would probably be one of those questions, maybe on a multiple choice, where you wouldn't see this first answer. You would have to simplify. This is a lot easier to simplify than the previous problem. Okay, questions on how I got anything here? Yes, sir? So every time we do a product or quotient, it's smart to just make the table with... I think so. Keep everything as organized as possible. Um, if you remember, like, if you had to multiply this, the way I always taught it when I taught Algebra 2 is I would create a 3 by 2 box and I put these on the top and down the side. It just keeps everything organized. So it's just an example. Okay, any other questions? <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so let's take a look here. Um, and as I was talking before, uh, with respect to um, making a choice, sometimes using the product and quotient rule is not always going to be the best way, um, but you have a choice. So a lot of times um, teachers will tell you, you have to do it this way. This is the only way that I'll do it. You can't do it any other way. You have a choice. You need to make the choice that works for you and that is going to work best for you. So it says that although a function, um, a given function is either a product or a quotient, sometimes it's easier to simplify the function and you can rewrite as a sum or a difference and avoid using the product and quotient rules. So if you have a sum or difference, basically remember the sum and difference of specific terms, all you're doing is taking the derivative of each individual one. Whereas in the quotient and product rules, you have to use a specific rule. So it just depends on, you know, what you feel is going to work best for you. So I'll show you an example. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to rewrite this, okay, in friendly form, and I'm going to distribute. So here I have f of x is equal to x to the one-half times x squared plus 2, which means now I can distribute this. I am deciding in my mind that I don't want to use the product rule. I just don't. So when I distribute, remember when your bases are the same and you're multiplying, what do you do to your exponents? You do. You add them. So this will become, what, x to the 5 halves? Because this is 4 over 2. So this is x to the 5 halves plus 2x to the 1 half power. Now all I have to do is take the derivative of each individual one. So I've got f prime of x is equal to 5 halves x to the 3 halves, is that right? Plus, when I bring this 1 half down, that 2 goes away, and this is 1 over uh, the square root of x because it's x to the negative 1 half power. So it's 1 over the square root of x or x to the 1 half in the bottom. Okay, that's the derivative. And I decided that I wanted to use just addition or subtraction. However, I could have decided to say, okay, fine, I'm going to use the product rule. So f is equal to um, the square root of x, and g is equal to x squared plus 2. 
So now f prime is equal to 1 over 2 squared of x. And I knew that quickly because it was in the top. And g prime is equal to 2x. Everybody good? No, the twos, the one half and the two canceled each other out. Because this one half comes down in front. So, are you with me? Okay. So now when I use the product rule of fig figgy, f prime of x is equal to f prime times g. So it's 1 over 2 square root of x times x squared plus 2 plus f g prime. So then it's 2x squared of x. If I simplify, these answers are identical, but they look totally different. It doesn't matter. They're exactly the same. You just have to pick which one works for you. It's a choice. Does everybody understand what I'm saying? These answers are the same. I mean, I could simplify and distribute and combine like terms, but it's not necessary. Questions? Are we going to have to do it the first way you did it? Because we can't use the product or question. Correct. Okay. Uh huh. Did everyone hear Bailey's question? She said, so on the quiz, we're going to have to do it this way. If you get a problem like this, yes, on the quiz, because it only goes through 2.3. Okay, so you would have to get everything together in terms of addition or subtraction. You cannot use a product rule, because the quiz isn't on the product rule. Okay, so now I'm going to ask you in B. What do you want to do? Do you want to use a quotient rule, or do you want to simplify? I'm sorry, not everybody all at once. I can't hear you when you're all talking. Okay, let's practice a quotient rule, right? Okay, sure. So let's make our table just like this. We're going to say that f is equal to x plus 1, and g is equal to the square root of x. So what's f prime? One. That's easy, right? What's g prime? Two, one over two, two yeah, 1 over 2 square root of x. Okay, now we're going to put everything together. Now remember, this might come out nice and ugly. Why? Because it's going to be another quotient, right? It's f prime g minus f g prime all over g squared. And one of these is a fraction. But again, what are we typically using the derivative for? Yet to find the slope. So we're just going to plug something in, right? Okay, so let's take a look here. We've got f prime of x is equal to f prime times g, so that's just the square root of x, right, because it's 1 times the square root of x, minus f g prime, yikes, 1 over 2 square root of x times x plus 1, and this is all over the square root of x squared. So what is that? Okay. Now, if you were asked to simplify this, what would you do? Just tell me what you would do. We have a complex fraction, right? So you would just multiply by what? 2 squared of x over 2 squared of x. And it would get rid of that fraction. You would distribute here. It would get rid of this. And then you would have a radical in the bottom. Are you allowed to have a radical in the bottom? Yes. Absolutely. You've graduated to calculus. OK, it's a privilege. Can I leave it like this, though? Yes. Of course you can. Yep. OK, any questions on B? Okay, you guys should be able to do C and D. The answers are posted on Blackboard. <laughs>